I still recall the ecstasy of the sun piercing through the trees. While our hours passed along with enchanting, with the chanting of the wind blowing across the mountain. I hope that I had forgotten you forever and ever. Anna, my love. Hello, Glam Gem. Uh, I hope nobody voted out of scrolls this week. It wasn't in the list. No doubt about it. I could count every single crevice. She was that sort of girl. How did I end up here anyway? I feel as if I walked here in a trance. Possibly because I walked here in a trance. But now I'm past the gates. I must figure out why I keep dreaming about her. I am in dire need of answers. Oh, I wish the volume controls would work on this game. Please let me know if it's too loud, okay? I don't know why I would frighten you. Hmm. Assorted rocks are scattered across the ground. Who assorted them? Don't quite know. Ooh. A pebble. We have. Hey, Pebble, we've won. Let's go home. Okay, I... I know this game gets a bit dark at the start, uh, at the end, but at the moment it's all light and fluffy and there's kittens and there's bunny rabbits. There's something inside this blue thing. So... Little Boulder. Mm, I'm feeling a little bolder, guys. I'm feeling a little bolder. Yep, yeah, um, I'm totally unable to uh, to log in, so I couldn't set the game, which is the reason why it's still saying the Elder Scrolls, because I can't actually uh, log in to change the channel title, which is great. Ooh, what's that? A dirty object. Ooh, it's a dirty object, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's wash it, shall we? I cleaned it with water. It's some piece of gear. And how could it have wound up under those rocks? We'll never know. Unless, of course, the game tells us, in which case we'll know. So what else have we got around here? I just want to look at this green area before I start looking at the house. And then we'll try to work out how to get in. Wooden branch. Like that. I've been playing too many modern games, so I keep on pressing E to pick things up. I've already got one. You can't have two pebbles, guys. Not in this game. It's closed. Maybe it's possible to open it from the inside. Oh, already got a pebble. Can't have more than one pebble. Union rules, you know. Oh, that's a nice sound, isn't it? Okay, I've turned the volume down. Hopefully that will get things a little bit better. There's a little string there. It shouldn't be hard to cut it. Especially when you think that I have a knife. We're done. I cut the rope. I'll bring it with me. Oh, that's a horrible sound. Uh, everything I've seen about this game says it should be a really nice psychological... Well, it's not even psychological. It's just open horror. Um, but at the moment, <laughs> I've got to be honest, I'm not that impressed. No way I can break it with my bare hands. What have I got in my inventory? How about if I throw a pebble at it? No. No, you can't throw pebbles at uh, cracked walls. What if I poke it with a wooden branch? Ah. Wooden branches have power to destroy walls. Okay. Um, 
There we go. Dry branch mechanism. This is a rather strange mechanism. It seems to be missing some parts. Okay. I wouldn't bet it's missing a gear, which I happen to have half of. Which, thinking about it. Let's use our stick of ultimate destruction on here. No? How about an intercontinental ballistic pebble? Yes! Gear piece. I can't reach it. Let's see if we can poke it out with a stick. Got it! Okay, so we now have two pieces of gear that's probably put together. It fit together perfectly. Well, I need something to hook them up. Oh, get away from all that noise. Okay, right. Oh. We have a piece of string. It's obvious that we should tie it together with a piece of string. The gear has been fixed now because you often find gears with pieces of string tied together. Uh, right, repaired gear. In there. Yeah, it should work now. Alright, there's a button here. It's like a doorbell, but it knocks on the door. Whee! <laughs> and the typos begin. Alright. All the candles and the lamp have been lit. Does somebody still live here? An old handkerchief. In very bad shape. It might crumble in my hands. So I'm not going to take it. Okay. These are the people who like their cement. Okay. Oh no, glam chair. I'm so hor so horribly sad to hear that. This is a broken table. I'm gonna have to hit it with something. Have I got anything I can hit it with? No. Oh. Oh. Oh, have I missed something? Can I get back out? Okay. Right, okay. I think I might have cocked up because there's a canteen and there's water outside. Perhaps I should have used the canteen and the water. We'll find out. There's a vase with some flowers in it. Oh, okay, right. This, sorry, this sounds uh, utterly, utterly terrible. I just need to pause this for a second and have a look at the sounds. Because they are actually hurting my ears. And I cannot control them actually within the game. Because the game is just ignoring them. So, what I'm actually going to do is just go to Windows Volume Settings and see if I can turn that down. See if that makes a difference. Uh, okay, that's a little bit better. Oh dear, sorry guys. Uh, an old saw. Unfortunately it's broken. It's feeling a bit sore. Uh, don't worry about it too much. Uh, uh, Glam Chem, just tell them that's where the alien was removed or something like that. Somebody crying. Well, let me open it. Okay, it's not going to let me open it. We'll find out who the person crying is later on. Incidentally, to open doors, you don't just click on things. You actually have to perform the motion of opening the door. It's so much fun. Wheel. Uh... 
Okay. Some roots. They seem soft and easy to cut. Is that a hint? This puny knife is apparently they're not that easy to cut. Okay. A puddle, a pool of stagnant water, perhaps formed after a rainstorm. Which apparently I... Ooh. What do I fear? Okay, let's go look around here, see if we can actually find something to do things with. Now, I can move these by hand. Let's pull them out of the way and see if that opens up anything. What on earth was that? About seals and their usage. Uh, documents about seals and their usage. The, the, the seals, therefore, if created and proficient, positioned befittingly on the doors as explained hitherto, will render it impossible to be opened by those who do not key the, do not key the ritual needed to destroy the power and melt the immaterial bonds of which the seal is a padlock. It is a manner of putting the t to the test the resolution, the will, and the intelligence of whoever seeks to break it. Oh dear, we are doomed. In this manner, only those who demonstrate to be worthy of the treasures of knowledge contained beyond that door can access it, and only strength and intelligence used together will be the key to access such treasures and secrets. The rest of this volume will illustrate the manner for melting these seals, including the rituals and necessary equipment for such an objective. Much will already be known to those who are knowledgeable in alchemy practices or ken the connections between matter and form. But we will we, we want to help those who are totally ignorant of such matters as to provide a point of departure for those wishing to conjure harder magical spells and rituals into practice. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you rituals for dummies. What remains to be described is the, the seal called that of the five eyes, as it is kenned by those who know magic and spells. It is one of the most powerful seals one can find and represents the magical maximum test of value and knowledge for those who try to melt it, because it is intended to safeguard the secrets of the species which raises the most pity in those who are virtuous. However, possesses the courage to try will have to use the symbols of the deepest essences and must be willing to make some sacrifices. In fact, after having united the ceremonial knife with the most refined substance of fire, as we have hitherto described, whoever seeks to accomplish the ritual will have to use the knife upon himself to shed the blood in uncontaminated water so that the sort of bridge is created which connects the warm and dry element to a cold and wet one. It is important, however, that to stabilize the connection, a source of sunlight must be present to hit the water with its rays. If everything is performed correctly, the seal will mount and the candidate will be capable of seeing the image interpreted as if it were present inside of him, as the seals usually do when the primary ritual is performed successfully. In the particular case of the seal of the five eyes, one must remember that it is this is destined to contain a source of intimate pain and torment. The brave one must recognize the pain of the mother and show pity and compassion through contact with the faces of the innocent. As per rule, the seal provides an incomplete representation which the celebrant must complete, establishing a connection with the material world through that he can eternally he can find eternally near the place where the seal was found 
and which forms part of the place. As demonstration of the proper execution of the rite, the officer will witness a vision as the struggle of the mother is resembled. Through the operations described here, he will witness her crying. <sighs> Oh dear, okay, right. Um, from what I'm working out here, I think this is going to be where the ritual room is going to be. We're going to need to purify this water, presumably. There's going to be our source of light. And I'm willing to bet there's going to be about a dozen other things we're going to want to do. So let's have a look around here. That was not there beforehand. I'm fairly certain of that. Still can't pick that up. Stove. Lit stove. What does it say? An old wooden stove that's been lit. Is it possible someone else passed through here? Ooh. Ooh. And you are welcome, Mega Racer. Alright, okay. Hmm. Ah, there's a door there. There's the door we can't open up. We found the book. As a broken saw there we're probably going to need to fix. With with this saw blade we can't pick up most likely. And looks like there's not much else we can do here. So let's tr let's go through this door. Ladies and gentlemen, the dragon has entered the building. It's locked. I need a key for it. Let's not go through this door. What a stupid idea. Oh, Lucien and Margarita. Oh, Margarita. Let's have a quick look at that one. In times gone by, youths ventured into the woods to vow their eternal love. Thus, on that day, Lucian the shepherd took Margarita by the hand and led her amidst the trees. Margarita was sweet like the spring, with hair like gold threads, and her hands were as quick in cotton, spinning as a nightingale was flying. For all of this, the shepherd desired her hand in marriage. It was a beautiful October day, and the snow seemed to be yet distant, but after a long walk, and while they were amidst the thick of the woods, the sun was covered by the clouds, and Margarita said, Please, my love, let us return home. A cloud has covered the sun, and if a thousand drops were to fall from the sky, sick we would become, you and I. But the shepherd replied, One more step, my dove. I have heard the sounds of an axe, and I do not want the woodcutter's ears to eavesdrop our vows. Margarita followed him, and on they walked for a hundred steps more. The sky darkened, and the maiden trembled. She pleaded, Please, my love, let us return home. The cloud is darkened, and if a hundred flakes should, would fall, the path will vanish, and they won't even find us at all. But the shepherd had seen a hunter several trees away, and he did not want... It's a busy place, this. And he did not want the hunter's eyes to spy on their kisses. And he replied, Courage, my dove, one more step bit of a liar this guy isn't he a hundred steps later a very white light flared far in the distance and Lucian clenched his beloved's hand more tightly because he desperately wanted to reach it snow had begun to fall and the young maiden desired to go back she dragged her feet and pleaded but Lucian gripped her hand tighter and dragged her Margarita wept please if you love me stop and let us try to find the way home but the young man no longer heeded her Margarita tried to stop him whilst the lights before them continued to grow. He let go of her hand and proceeded alone. Margarita fell upon the ground while he disappeared into the storm. Thus she gathered all her courage, took her skirt and hand and rushed to stop him because she truly loved him and did not want any harm to befall him. But Lucian, feeling his hands being pulled back, turned around with a face which no longer seemed to be his own and screamed be gone you jealous harpy why do you linger still she is calling me with a voice that nary a thousand nightingales can match and here you are cawing like a choked crow be gone and saying this he turned away from her 
but Margarita did not relent and grabbed him by the by his pants. Who are he should have to take these trousers off. So the young man turned with the stone in his hand and hit her hard on her face and disappeared, leaving her upon the ground. When Margarita opened her eyes again, the snow had ceased falling. The night was silent, but the light was still there. Enveloped by terror, the young girl ran as far as she could. When she was found the following morning, her golden hair had turned white, and her face, once sweet and beautiful, was now disfigured by a long scar. Nothing was again heard of Lucian, and no one ever ventured into those woods again. Ooh. Hmm. A lot of lore in this, which I'm really liking. But some roots. They seem soft and easy to cut, just not by knives. Okay, let's go into the warehouse if we can. It is bolted shut with a sturdy padlock, keeping me from discovering what may lie in the warehouse. It's a lie, I tell you. No, it's a warehouse, I tell you. Okay. No, there's the, neither of the two doors will work at this point. Is there anything I could possibly use to... Well, I suppose I could use the stick of ultimate power. I don't think that's quite right for just this point. Lamp. Oh, I can use a lamp. Lit stove. We've already looked at that. I can't think of anything that could possibly... Ooh. I'm assuming that was not a good sign. Oh, yeah, I know, a bit late. That's the wonderful thing about... Uh, um, point and clicks. I wonder. Can I pick it with my trusty pocket knife? No. I set fire to it. No. Can't use the lighter on the lamp. Okay. No, nothing more under that. Can't move any of these sticks. Let's see if I can do anything with this stove. No. Oh, I wonder. I wonder. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Indeed, to be totally honest with you, I wonder. Can we use the canteen on the puddle? The flask is full. You're absolutely right, the stick should be able to do everything. So. Bingo! <laughs> oh dear. Right, we have a key. The stove is broken. If I light it in the car, it will smoke out the whole room. I'm willing to bet. Oh, okay. I need to find something to fix it. Mm. Or smoke out the whole room. That might be the reason. Okay, let's try that key out.
Alright. I have that habit. Stoves just get annoyed around me for some reason. I've no idea why. Oh, actually, to be totally honest... Hmm. To be totally honest with you, um... Uh, washing machines get unaccountably angry around me. They keep on breaking. I've no idea why. <laughs> do not put out the fire. Whatever you do. Oh, crap. <laughs> well, thank you for that insightful piece of advice there. Uh, okay, here's an... Pairs aprons. It's a load of old cobblers, if you ask me. A bone hilt. Ooh, I think I can guess what that's for. Far away and nearby fairy tales. Okay. Hooked blade. Heavy knife hilt. Okay, I see, I see, I see. A tool. It doesn't say what sort of tool it is. It just says it's a tool. I'm here, you fool. Actually, no, I'm somewhere else. You sound scary. And an axe. Alchemy and Thaumaturgy. Clamp. Oh, I can. I think I can start to see what we're going to be doing in this room. This be the room in which we make stuff. <laughs> Hi. Oh, yep. Alright, okay. Um, let's see those books we got. Oh, achievement unlocked once upon a time. The hero passed beyond the monster's jaws and found the enchanted castle as the sorcerer the sorceress had foreseen. A castle with mountain like walls made of sparkling stone and smooth as an assassin's blade. Clouds covered its towers, and the giant front portal was adorned by terrible gold tusks. The hero grabbed the door's knocker, ooh, a silver circle between the jaws of a golden lion, and struck the lead plate with all his might for three times. Its jaws quivered, and the lion rumbled, but it did not relinquish the ring. Who dares disturb my sleep? It is... It is I, and I command thee to let me pass, the brave hero replied. Dare put your hands between my tusks and release this ring from my mouth? Only then will I reveal thee the lock. Why don't you open your mouth? I cannot allow it to fall. The hero took the silver ring from the tremendous lion's mouth and realized it was a magnificent crown adorned with gems. Put it on your head. Only then can I obey you. Thus the hero placed the crown on his head and ordered, Lion, reveal the lock. And so the lion's head leapt down from the portal, and the hero watched as his entire body followed it. A magic spell had trapped within the portal this magnificent beast, large as a bull and bright silver sword stretched between two golden chains was revealed behind it the lion said only the blood of the brave can grease the sword and imprison it from these bolts and so he clawed the, the hero whose chest started to bleed the hero smeared his hands in his own blood and greased the sword with it the sword slipped from its hinges but did not let itself be caught it said any the bracelets of power can bend me and thus the hero removed the bolts from the door, and he could see that these were two heavy golden cuffs that fitted him perfectly. He placed them upon his wrists and grabbed the sword. Then, with the sword in his hands and the crown on his head, he struck the door three times, ordering it to open in the name of its master. The hinges turned, the gigantic portal opened wide, and the proud lion bent its paws, saying, Please, my lord, my back is at your service. Okay.